What's going on, everybody? My name's Danny Ferrari. My name's Parker Immense. We are Excellent Sound, and we are back with a very special video for you guys. Super special, guys. Welcome back. This is how we mix our drums. back everybody hopefully you guys enjoyed that that is actually our uh if you guys didn't how to see chop sushi rolls how to chop sushi rolls we're gonna be showing you guys how we mix our drums this is a very highly requested video yeah we, you guys have been asking for this for i mean i don't know how long since we started the channel right um and this is actually uh this is a prior video where we did a 20 minute drop challenge yep hybrid trap challenge and this is what came out now obviously what i did is uh i went ahead and uh turned off all the mixing so we're gonna go ahead and mix these drums uh but we have done these drums before we do them all the same pretty much the same time every way yeah um but you guys are gonna be able to see it uh how we actually do it what our process is and hopefully it's helpful to you guys um if you guys want the full project file go to our patreon right now we have it uh for the uh youtube tier i think it's in the Ju month of june is when i when i did that yeah one. i think it was about four weeks ago yeah, it was about four weeks ago. Uh, for signing up, you get like 30 project files right off the bat. We'll get more into that later. But if you do want this project file, uh, you know, we made this entirely with our new Pack Cartel Volume 2. We'll have the download description in the in the de yeah. description. Yeah, the description. Yeah. The um, Patreon description. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get into this. I'm going to show you guys some of the processes that go into mixing. Now, what we have here is we have uh, just our samples from Cartel Volume 2, which is out. I recommend you guys go get it. And I think the most important thing that I would say that everybody really like doesn't really get right away when they first start mixing, and this is just in general, is it starts with the source, right? Yep. yep. It's it's with choosing the right sample for your song. You cannot polish a turd, right? Nope. You can only wait. You can polish a turd, but only so much. It'll still be a turd, though. Yeah, Mythbuster did it. It's still it's still a turd. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, and I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but I am. Uh, our samples are really great, and you don't really have to do too much to them. I'll show you some of the basics as far as what you need to do um, to get it really sounding good and get your drums really slapping. Ripping. So yeah, first things first, right? It starts with the source. Make sure you guys have good samples. Uh, there's tons of other companies out there, uh, but obviously ours, I recommend using ours. Highly recommend. If you like the way this sounds, you're, you know, it's literally, there's nothing on anything right now. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and get into that. Oh, let me turn this off. I'll get into that too. So the first thing that I want to talk about is when you're when you're mixing your drums, okay, especially if it's EDM, right? What's the most important thing in EDM to you? Kick and snare, dude. The kick and snare. And it's it's really, really the the anchor of the song. I feel like the kick is so important in EDM. Before anything else, if you can have a good kick and a good snare, everything else should come uh, together very yeah. easily. I like to mix um, my stuff around my drums first. It's the first thing I go to. You do the same thing. Yeah, I think you and me, we, we mix our drums a little louder, yeah, too. Yeah, we like them really loud. We love, we love it when it slaps. But I think that that's uh, you know, a common uh, thing, with a lot of, especially with like this type of genre and EDM. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, uh, I'm going to start with the kick. Let's go ahead and listen to it. Sounds nice. It's a very boxy kick, right? Um, I have my kick and snare in the same group. A lot of times uh, people will put them in a drum group or whatever. I like to have them either in the same group or in their own groups as far as my main kick and my main snare, okay? Because I want to have full control over them. So for this kick, I don't think it needs too much. It's nice. It doesn't sound floppy. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just add a basic EQ. Now we do have a sub, an 808, which we're gonna talk about mixing that too in a little bit and also how to make it fatter. Uh, and go over uh, different things of as far as like processing and EQing uh, to really make the sound better and then also make room for it. So for this kick, a lot of times what I like to do, and this, uh, this is, I would say is more sound design mixing, is I like to find that boom, right? I like to make it fat. If I need more fat, I'll always check here, okay? And I look for this other thing that I like to call the knock, right? And essentially what I'm looking for is where it sounds like somebody's knocking. That's like the punch 
that hits you in the chest. Exactly. And a lot of people think that like, I mean, 808s are obviously very important, but like the real feeling that you get from an 808 is usually from the top kick that's hitting you in the chest that makes it really All fast. All that attack. Exactly. So I'm gonna essentially pull up a little bit of an EQ here. And I can hit these little headphones here and, and solo out that band. I'm just gonna look for a knock. That's a knock. Yep. And I'll bring it down slightly. And then sometimes you can even bring up the highs. Right? But I don't think we really need to in this case. Um, so that's looking pretty good. If it's clipping a little bit, that's also fine too, as long as it sounds good at the end of the day. But you can turn down the gain over here on the right to really mix it in. Okay, so I'm soloing everything first. So I wanna see how my kick and snare are gelling together. I have them in a bus and I just have a basic compressor with a very slow attack and no threshold really. All that's essentially doing is just cutting off any tiny little peaks that are there. Putting the roof on it. Correct. Okay, so the snares is 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 all right. It needs, needs more power, right? So I'm listening to these. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do with the snare is I'm definitely gonna throw an EQ on it and I'm gonna cut out any low stuff because I don't want any low frequency with my kick. See, there's a bunch of low there. So I'm gonna cut out all the lows that I don't need. Now there's this really great thing in Ableton 10. Uh, Parker really recommends this. Is yeah. the uh, the drum bus, especially on snares. This is something I really like doing as well. Yeah, it's one of my favorite plugs. Um, a little pro tip here: drum bus. Uh, I think it's transient shaping enhance right here. Go yeah. ahead and put it on. And essentially, what this is doing is this really going to accentuate the uh, transient of that snare. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So you really got to play with it. And you can even adjust the dry wet. But always, when you're mixing, always be taking off, turning stuff on and off to see what it's doing to make sure it's doing something good. That sounds pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe try 100%. Nice sizzle. Yeah, a little sizzle. You can add more boom. It's a little bit of like a, like a lower end. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another EQ at the end of this. Because I added this, this is gonna add low end, watch. See, all that low end that I cut out just came right back in. So I'm gonna add another EQ. And I'm also gonna find, sometimes you can boost this frequency, right, where the actual punch of the snare is. I like it up there too a little bit. Yeah. It's that nice fundamental. Now these have to be really nice and loud. Okay, at this point, once I have a good kick and snare relationship, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust uh, my sub, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and solo it with the sub. On the sub, all I have is a saturator. This is essentially just limiting it just a tiny bit. I already have, uh, this is on the group. So the subs should go in the sub group, okay? Your drums should go in your drum group. Your, if you wanna keep your kick and snare separate like I do, you wanna put them in their own separate group. But your sub needs to be in its own group and you need to process everything the same. So saturation right on the sub, just basically soft clip is enabled and some side chain, which I will go over in a little bit. Uh, and then this is the sub. Now I, I already have this kind of somewhat pre eq but we're gonna make this better. Uh, all I essentially am I doing is I have this utility on and you can also put your sub in mono if you want You can hit that and that essentially makes it mono which might be a good idea Another soft clip essentially is just just really just cutting off any peaks that I might have and cutting out the lows, okay? Now if I turn this off There's a lot of highs in that and I did not want that because we're gonna make our own highs so I'm cutting out some of the high end here. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now at this point, what you can do is you can add a top layer of the sub. Now, once you bring in the sub, this is for my process, I think for yours too, that's when I'm really checking the master, right? I don't have a master, oh, I do have it on, sorry. I should have turned it off, but. Like it should be sounding really good with your master because you always want, like, 
most people like master at the very end or some people do it from the very beginning. The reason why is, is mastering is a lot of compression and a lot of limiting sometimes. And what that can do is totally crush your 808. So I'm always checking my 808 to make sure it's not getting destroyed by my master. Exactly. You want to be checking that all the time just so there's no surprises after you're mixing. Yeah. You have to go back, turn stuff down or turn it up. Um, it's the it's the most powerful sound in a song. It right. It's the most energy uh, getting pushed through that master. Yeah, and like a limiter can, can, can totally mess that up. So what you want to make sure that you do is is if your master, if you're hearing that your sub's getting killed or destroyed from your kick and snare, you know, when you're just playing it with your kick and snare, when you put your master on, that means you need to go back into your 808 and, and mix it. Usually, it's not usually a problem with the master, especially if you're using this master chain, which we will maybe do a video if you guys want on mastering too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm checking with my master chain, making sure everything's nice and tight and I still have all my dynamics, so everything's nice and loud. But I think this 808 needs a little bit more help. So we're gonna sound design just a little bit here, and I'm just gonna duplicate the 808, and I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna delete this now, and I'm essentially gonna try to make a very um, buzzy sort of top layer to the 808. So I'm gonna add a bunch of erosions. We're just gonna duplicate like maybe three of them, cool. Uh, and then this sign one is really fun to use. Uh, I really like this. This adds a little bit of sizzle. And actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an EQ because I know I'm not going to be using the low end of this. This is just going to be essentially a layer. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do like that a later. Puzzle, a puzzle, you guys. Yeah. Fitting all these the different sounds together. So that sounds pretty good, that little area right there. And then I'm going to add another one. And I'm mad at that. And then white noise, okay? This white noise is going to add a lot. I'm just looking for a nice buzz. And then what I can also do is add a saturator, which is what we're going to do now. And I'm going to add this saturator, and I'm going to put on soft clip, and I'm going to add some drive. I'm liking that, okay. And then maybe um, maybe another, no, not a saturator. Let's go, let's just mess with the EQ now. I want that buzz. So I might bring out some top end. Let's see how it's sounding with the 808. There we go. And then essentially what I can do is I can, uh, I'm gonna cut off a little bit of highs here. And then what I'm going to do now is is I can mix this 808 and make sure it's uh, you know the level wise that I want. Let's hear it with the kick and snare. Ratio is really important. And I'm just kind of balancing it out. I think that sounds pretty good. Let's hear how that's sounding in the mix. It's adding a lot of glue. Yeah, exactly. So another thing too is side chain. The way we have this side chain set up uh, is really cool. The side chain is essentially being triggered by serum. We have it just uh, just hitting a MIDI note. Or I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, it's just hitting a saw. I think. It's just very simple, like very short, very quick attack, right? Because we just want the side chain in the very, very beginning. Uh, I've been trying this technique out a lot lately, and I really like it. Uh, if you guys want to see like a full uh, side chain type of video, like on a bunch of different techniques, let us know too, because that'd be really cool to to do that. Yeah, for you there's guys tons of well. different ways. So I'm using a uh, just a saw wave, right? That's all. That's my trigger. It's just a very fast saw wave with a very quick attack. Okay, and then what's happening is. Uh, it has the same kick and snare pattern. On my sub, I have the ratio all the way up. So it's a very, very heavily compressed. There's like nothing there. So you Essentially can, a limiter. Yeah. But you can hear there's no attack in that sub. The attack is super, super fast on the on the uh, side chain. And the raise is at 6.35. So it's, let's go really quick too. And then the snare as well. I don't think, I think there's no snares where it hits. But yeah, essentially that's how we are side chaining this. So let's go ahead and get into the symbols now. I think this is like a really, 
this is like a lot of fun to mix i love mixing these types of drums uh i got some toms here i like to solo everything first and then hear them together usually okay so look here my eq is showing me i got some extra stuff here i don't need any of this, this all is, that flub all that flub is for my sub right I've been doing this thing lately too where I've been putting OTT on my toms. It's kind of a, I know, it's kind of crazy, but I really like the result of it sometimes. Pull up some highs, pull up some mids. Look at the difference. Yeah, so much more attack. Yeah, and I turned the, the amount down. And then also, again, cut the lows out because those lows are getting more added by this OTT. You can also do this trick. Thank you, Morgan, for that from FOMO. And that cuts the lows for you. Thanks, buddy. Cool, that's looking good. So let's go ahead and get into the next tom. Pretty simple tom. Let's go ahead and do this. As you can see, these are all in the drum group. I'm just gonna kind of repeat the same process. These are all, again, these are all the cartel. These All these uh, samples are from our pack Cartel Volume 2 that's out. So if you guys don't have it, I recommend going and get it. Maybe pull up some more top end. I really like hearing the the, the attack, head. Yeah, the, the head attack. of the drum. And then I'm turning down the volume a smidge. Okay, cool. That's sounding good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next drum. It's a little breakbeat fill. I don't think we need to do too much. Sometimes you don't need to really do anything besides just do this, people. Just look at it with the analyzer. Get rid of that shit. We don't need it. Yeah. Just go until it starts to sound filtered. So that sounds too filtered, right? So then you bring it back. It should sound essentially the same, right? Exactly. It's, you should not notice a difference when you're doing these low cut EQs. You should only, if you start to hear a little bit of a difference, then pull it back just a tiny bit. That's like the best advice I've ever gotten. Yeah, all of this low end always adds up. When, yeah. you're, when you have 96 tracks in your song, you know, and you're not cutting the lows and you still don't hear it, it's all adding up at the, at the end of the day. You could literally just clean up your entire track by cutting out all the lows that you do not need. I bet you if you go into your track and you're like, wow, it's sounding muddy. Yeah. Just cut the lows of every single thing. Like that's not a, that doesn't need lows. Like this does not need lows. I have my I have my snare in there. Mm -hmm. I have my kick going. Those are those are those are the important things that I really want accentuating. So again, we're mixing around the kick and the snare and the sub. Those are the main important things. So let's go ahead and go on. I have a uh, a group of hats. So I have a group within a group, which is really cool about Ableton. Ten is that you can add groups within groups. I'm waiting oh, for that. Yeah. Uh, on the hi hat, I have a uh, just a very extreme low cut um, on the hats. So let's go ahead and listen to them real quick on the group itself. So nothing. Look, if I bring this out, all that all that crap right there, right? I can't hear a difference. So that means I don't need it, right? That's like yep. a, what I want you guys to think of. If you can't hear it, then you do not need it, right? Always with everything. Okay. So these hats, uh, the first the 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 top hi hat. We're going to go ahead and cut the lows here too. Even though we're cutting it at the group, so essentially these are going to here. This is it's still it's still in there. We can still clean it up by just cutting the lows here. It's good practice anyway. Great. Okay, that's sounding pretty good. Um, to add some cool dynamics to it, um, I can do uh, I have it here. This this is a, uh, a velocity. It's a MIDI effect that you can add to add some different velocities to the hi-hat. Uh, so it's not the same every this time. This is a huge tip, you guys. Yeah. Huge tip right here. We love this dynamic. It's in uh, MIDI MIDI effects. Yeah, MIDI effects and it's velocity. yeah velocity. And they have a bunch of different ones uh, that you can do. It's really helpful. Yeah. Uh, you can also what we have here is we have our hi hats delayed 24 milliseconds, so they're a little bit swung. Uh, you can do that. You can also use the groove pool, which we have a how to a groove video that Parker did a long ass time ago. Yeah, that was one of our first videos. Yeah, so we have that one. Uh, if you guys want to check that one out too, uh, where it talks a little bit about using grooves and such, but. And if you guys don't know where the track delay is, it's uh, oh, just yeah. that D right there. Good call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hit that D right there. <laughs> hit that D and the track delay will come <laughs> up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we have the hi-hats a little bit delayed. Uh, and then we have this open hi-hat, right? Pretty simple. Just cut out the lows. Same thing. Depending upon the sample, you might want to add a little tiny bit of reverb. Now, I've been doing this lately, and I really like it. And the only type of reverb I'm trying to add on hats is a very short room reverb. And my thought process on this is that when you're, when drums sound 
realistic stuff always sounds better to us, even mm -hmm. though EDM sounds great. Yeah. When something sounds like it's in a place, it sounds better. But you have to be really careful with reverb. Everybody, all these people that we do lessons for, everybody puts a shit ton of reverb on it. And I just take off the reverb sometimes. All different reverbs, too, that oh don't even God. make sense. Like, they yeah. have really big, long reverbs and then short reverbs together. And they're like, why doesn't it sound good? You it's really like got to know what you're doing with reverb to really use it. And you don't need a lot of it. No. So this type of reverb is more like using it like a, a room reverb and i kind of learned this from i want to say i was inspired by you parker for this because i feel like this like as like somebody who is a drummer yeah. um like i was just thinking about how things should be essentially be sounding so yeah just put them in an environment right so in this case i'm going to cut out all the lows uh and just have some highs and i'm going to shorten the decay time like really short like around there and then bring the dry wet down <laughs> Just kind of brings it out just a little bit more. Tiny bit. Little things like that matter. Um, you can also add side chain on your hats as well. Um, it's not necessarily a bad idea, but if you do, I recommend not doing it too much because you can really lose the attack of your of your hats. Uh, so I'm not going to do it in this case, but sometimes I will do that. Uh, it's very popular in like dubstep. Other styles of music yeah. too. Yeah, they, they dip the hats out. Um, so for this closed hat, this is like one of my favorite things to do. I do this with a lot of percussions. So if I have my drum group, I'll have like my higher percussions, which would be like shakers, snaps, and claps and such like that. Uh, and then I'll have like my lower drums, which would be like any sort of extra snares or toms or anything like that. Um, and I'll have my hats and cymbals all essentially in that group. So again, group within group. And you can all adjust those completely differently. Uh, for this, what I like to what I like to do with my hats is I like to use auto pan, right? So you can take auto pan and put it on your hi hats or put it on the group itself. This is a big one, guys. Turn this is a big tip. Yes, turn the amount up like a lot, and then adjust the rate maybe a little bit. And what this is going to do is this is going to make that the hi hats kind of moving around, right? People do not pan, and we don't Nobody really pan pans. that much. But like it's so powerful, especially if you're doing it. We pan, bro. We pan, we dude. Pan. We pan, bro. Take care of your stereo field, guys. <laughs> Take care of the stereo <laughs> field. And I don't have to pan it over here. I can just add auto pan. I can also draw it in. If you're wearing headphones, it's moving around. That is just giving more room for everything that's mono to be essentially uh, where it's supposed to be. And it doesn't be. sound. It doesn't sound too different when you're. Um, it's just giving. It's just giving space to the hats. Exactly. You know, it doesn't sound differently. It, you don't. It's not conscious left and right. But the only thing I will say though <laughs> is that sometimes with auto pan with the left right sort of scenario, what can happen is. Uh, it can trick your ears to thinking it's a little bit quieter mm -hmm. if depending upon how much the amount is So you might want to adjust it up like a DB or two, which I might do in this case But again, we're gonna reference everything together Maybe down a little bit. I don't need it too much. Yeah Okay, that's sounding pretty good. So now let's go ahead and let's hear the drum group with the snare together Now here's another thought, okay? Now once we get everything kind of essentially mixed and all the crap taken out, it's all about levels. Now these levels are already essentially done, but I want my kick to be the loudest thing in the drums, mm -hmm. always. So I'm aiming for my ch my kick to hit at zero, okay? Always. So I want my kick at zero. It's hitting over it. Could be bad, could be good. Depends on how it sounds. If I bring it down, I like the crunch of it. As long as it's not like getting destroyed by the master, you're okay. And again, yeah, I, I have like the that. utility here in the master, which we'll get in another video, going down minus six. So it's bringing everything back down so I can bring it back up. But that kick, smacking. Like the way it sounds. Another trick you could do if you wanted to is you could add a glue compressor. Uh, full parallel sounds good on kicks sometimes. Uh, you can try it. It kind of tightens it up. I'm not too mad at it, but uh, yeah. I don't think it's really what I want. Maybe before the EQ. Maybe open up the attack a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little bit more crunch. And then another thing I'm going to do actually while I'm here is I forgot. I'm going to cut the low end just a little bit. I don't like to cut too much of the low end out of the kick ever, but I do have a very heavy sub. Because I don't want to lose that boom. That punch right there. Boom. With the sub. Okay. Yeah, we still want to feel the kick. Exactly. And then the same thing with the snare. I want the snare hitting pretty loud. Like the snare needs to be really loud. I 
should be able to hear the snare as much as I need to. And if you don't hear the snare, you could try putting a saturator on it or again, like try clipping it. Honestly, there's no rules yeah. as long as it sounds good. I try to always stay in the green, but I mean, if you don't, just make sure that these are essentially are hitting zero. And look, you can see the kick and snare. It's a nice, like a, those little bit of limiting too really helped out for when it goes in the master. It's nice and set up. So the edges, we just barely trim off when it gets to the master. So I think that's sounding pretty good. Me too. It's pretty simple, guys. It's really just cut the lows and designing the sound a little bit more if you need. Yeah, and don't you guys don't have to use all these fancy plugins. Like this is all Ableton stock yeah. stuff. Like sometimes we see, you know, project files that we get or or songs, like they have, you know, twenty different plugins from UAD, waves, like all this stuff. And it's it's like all we do is take all of that off, yeah. add like four plugs and it sounds like twenty times better and always like, go back yeah that's totally true and i think to add to that always go back into your mix and turn stuff on and off to see if it's actually doing anything good for the sound yeah and that's pretty much it guys hopefully you guys learned something from this video uh if you guys are new here please uh you know go ahead and subscribe we got tons of video tutorials we have tons of remakes we have uh production challenges which we'll be doing a lot more of uh, and of course, you know, we're always here trying to give you guys the best possible content we can. If you give us a thumbs up for the video too, if you enjoyed yourself, uh, we'd really appreciate that as well. Also drop your video requests in the comments. We're doing a bunch of new stuff right now. we got a lot of exciting stuff coming for you. Yeah. Um, and we want to know what you guys want. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, so yeah, again, all this stuff here is in Cartel Volume 2. Go check it out. It's on our website. Uh, it's $74.99. You get like 150 presets, like over 400 or 500 samples, all in there, all clean, ready to go for you to start putting in your project, start making work, and project file in there as well, too. Killer sounds, guys. If you want this project file, check it out on our Patreon. The link will be in the description below. We will see you guys in the next one. Right, Parker? Let's go. Let's go ahead and play it now that we have all the nice uh, drums nice yeah, and nice. Yeah, let's do it. Whole lot of gang shit. Woo. They're smacking. We'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys later.